Okay, so in my journey of migrating from CB radio to GMRS, I needed another handset. So I have gotten myself the BTEC GMRS V1 walkie talkie handset. I'm going to go through all of its features, give you a little mini review, and we're going to do some testing of the power output and some range tests to give you an idea of what kind of range these little radios can get. The GMRS V1 is $50 or $55 if you get it on Amazon, free shipping if you're an Amazon Prime member. The GMRS V1 is Part 95E FCC compliant, which means basically that you can make a video on YouTube and show yourself using it and not have to delete 500 comments from ham radio operators telling you that you're going to go to jail because it's not Part 95E compliant. And that also means that it is FCC approved for use in the GMRS frequencies. Now you do have to have a GMRS license to use the V1. That's not a ham license, it's GMRS license. That costs you $70, it's really easy to get. You just go online and pay the FCC for it. There's a link in the information section below to give you step-by-step -step instructions how to get a GMRS license if you don't already have one. The GMRS V1 is repeater capable, so you can talk to repeaters just like ham radios. And it's switchable between two watts and five watts. So I'm gonna throw this on my power meter and see how true that is. I'm not gonna go over every single feature of the radio, it's got a lot of stuff that I'll never use. I'm gonna go over every feature that I find useful for when I'm using the radio, which will probably be helpful for most of you. If you're an off-roader, if you go hiking, if you use, need a radio for paintball, that sort of outdoor activities, I think all the stuff that I go over will probably apply to you. All right, so full disclosure, I did purchase this radio with my own money, full price, no discount, nothing special. So everything that I say is my opinion and my opinion only. Uh, however, any links that I put down below in the information section to check out this or other products, those are affiliate links. So if you click on one of those links and then buy something, I will get sale for that credit. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's go over what you get in the box when you buy the GMRS V1. So you're going to get a nice manual written in full English. Easy to understand, goes over everything you'll need to know. You will get a nice little earpiece. This plugs into the side of the radio and then you attach this to your head and your ear. This is very similar to the one that comes with the Baofeng radios, but it looks like it might be a little heavier duty. The buttons are a little bigger. So this might be better than the cheapo one that comes with the Baofeng uh, UV5R type radios. You'll get the antenna, which you can't use the radio without. It's got a power adapter that will plug into the charger. It's got a little lanyard that you can attach to the side of the radio to wrap around your wrist. It has a belt clip that I already installed and it has the battery which slides on and off like that and that just slides in and pops right in. The unit itself is actually pretty uh, sturdy feeling. It doesn't feel like plastic junk. Oh, let's take this off. Don't want you to miss that. Uh, on top, you've got where you put your antenna in. It has a little LED flashlight, which is 100% useless until you need it. And then it's a freaking lifesaver. Transmit and receive lights. I don't know if you can see it, but it has two push to talk buttons. I'll go over those in a minute. It's got a button here to switch to FM radio because you can monitor, you can listen to uh, just regular FM music radio stations. And it's got a, uh, the M, the monitor button, so that you can press it and turn off your squelch, basically, to listen to any signals that are not breaking your squelch. Very similar to the UV5R type radios, menu button, exit, and A and B. A and B is for switching between the dual channels. We'll talk about that in a minute. And of course, all your buttons for entering frequencies and doing your menu functions, the menu system internally, and the shortcuts are all very similar, if not identical, to the uh, UV5R type radios. All right. So when we turn it on, you can see, and hopefully you can see it, it's got a dual line screen. This radio can receive on two different frequencies at the same time. So what you can do is program one frequency at the, on the top line and another frequency on the bottom line, and you can switch between those two. It will, it will listen to both of them and 
you can hear if anybody's talking on both frequencies. And then you can either have the radio automatically switch back and forth for transmitting, or what's really nice, and this is a great feature now, this is what the two different push to talk buttons are for. So if you receive something on channel A, and you wanna to talk to the person on channel A, you press and hold the, the A button. You wanna to talk to whoever's on channel B, you press and hold the B button. Now that would be really useful, for example, in my case, when I'm leading a large off-road event, I may be talking to all the people in the event on channel A, and I might have my crew on channel B, so I can talk privately with them. And that is a great feature to be able, for me to control which channel I'm talking on, instead of relying on the radio to switch between the two channels. And when I'm driving, I may not wanna take my eyes off the road or if I'm running down the trail or something, it's nice to know just by pressing A or B which channel I'm talking on. Now I disable the dual channel monitoring because most of the time I only need to talk on one channel. So when I disable it, uh, this radio has what's called the channel synchronization, which some of the older UV5R type radios do not have. So that I can set it so I can have my channel name on the top line and the channel frequency on the bottom line. And then when I change channels, they're synced together. That's a great little feature. Now this radio is prog programmable with Chirp, so you can customize the channel names, you can customize, you see the uh, screen colors. Three, zero. You can select blue or purple or orange, and you can select different screen colors for different functions. So when you're transmitting, you can set it to be one color, and when you're receiving, an another color. That's all programmable either through the menu functions right on the radio, or in Chirp, which is a little bit easier. And to program anything like that in Chirp, to connect it to Chirp, you will need the programming cable, which does not come with the radio. That's the PC03FDTI, I think is what it's called, cable. It's like 20 bucks, I'll put a link down below. You'll have to have that specific cable to connect this to your computer so you can use the Chirp software to uh, program it. You don't have to use the Chirp software, but it is much easier to do it on your computer than to try to go through all the menu options. And there are a few things that can only be done in Chirp, like uh, setting some of the channel names that cannot be done in the menus. And like I mentioned before, the menu system is very similar, if not the exact same as on a UV5R type radio. You select a menu option, press menu Power. to select it. Use the up or down button to change it. Press menu again Confirm. to save it. Now to use the radio, you will want to connect the included antenna. Oh, now I can hear people. Okay, now in the manual, so the manual says right on page seven, when you're connecting an antenna, make sure that the SWR on that antenna is 1.5 or less. That's to avoid damage to the receiver. If you have a high SWR, one, that means that your power, instead of going out and being transmitted, is is, be, is bouncing back into the radio. So the antenna is not working as well, your range may be limited, but worse, that power is reflecting and basically bouncing back down into the radio. That can cause the internals of the radio to heat up and it can damage them over time. An extremely high SWR could cause quick, fast damage, but a bad SWR, not a perfect SWR, won't explode your radio, but it's not good. So BTEC doesn't want you to use an antenna with an SWR that's any higher than 1.5. And in general, that's what I try to do. You know, the range goes one to one is perfect. So one is perfect SWR. 1.5 is, is okay. Two and above is not great. You want to avoid it. Anything over three is where you need to worry about things overheating and causing damage. So I've got this cheap little, uh, SWR and power meter. So let's hook this up and see what kind of SWR we get with this antenna. Now I know that this is not the most accurate SWR meter. It was like 25 bucks. Uh, so you don't need to post a comment to tell me that it's 0.03% off or whatever. I don't care. This is a fairly accurate SWR meter, but I know that this is not the best one in the world. That's gonna go into the radio. All right, so I'm on a channel that nobody's transmitting on and let's send some power out and see what it says. We're gonna turn this on. Let's see what the SWR is on the antenna that they sent us. Ooh, 2.0, 2.1. Not great. 
3.1, 3.0, that's on a higher frequency. Now we've tested um, half a dozen of these rubber ducky antennas with UV5R and similar type radios, and none of them work well in the GMRS range. They seem to be tuned for slightly lower frequencies. So what I did was I got one of the Nagoya antennas, the uh, 771, and that also is not tuned well for GMRS. So I did a little math and I calculated that if I trimmed the Nagoya to about 12 or 13 centimeters, it should get a better SWR. Now I don't know if I did my math wrong or if I cut it wrong, but I wasn't able to get a good SWR on my Nagoya 771 until I trimmed it down to about one centimeter. Now I've had several people on YouTube who've seen this tell me that, oh, that's gonna kill my range, and that is wrong. Uh, because what we have here now, with it trimmed down to the right length, is an SWR of 1.01. That is a near perfect SWR. It works perfect. So, and we're also, and we're gonna do some range tests in a minute, so we'll prove that. Okay, so the little rubber ducky antenna that comes with it is not the greatest. It's not tuned to GMRS frequencies, and it's above what uh, BTEC says it should be as far as the SWR. So, BTEC, why don't you send us an antenna that's better tuned to use on GMRS? Now let's test the power output. So the power, it should be uh, two watts on low and five watts on high. So I'm gonna take this antenna off and I'm gonna put on my little, uh, got this little dummy load that's a five watt dummy load. That'll give me a more accurate uh, power reading than with an antenna. Let's start with low power. power. That should be two watts. Let's transmit on low power and see what kind of output we get. 2.3 watts, right, pretty much right on the money. Now let's switch to high power and let's see how that goes. 4.3 watts, and that's on GMRS channel 16. Let's go down to a lower frequency and test GMRS channel one. 4.3 watts, let's go up to the highest channel and test that. 4.3 watts, so 4.3 watts, not quite five watts, but that's pretty close. Good enough for me, I've never seen a radio for less than 75 or $100 that uh, was perfectly right on, but you get a little extra on the two watt mode and a little less on the five watt mode, so that's not bad. Okay, so now let's do a quick little range test and see how this thing works. I'm gonna put on my trimmed Nagoya 771 antenna, trimmed to a near perfect SWR. Now there's not a lot of people in my area on simplex uh, talking, so I'm gonna try to hit some repeaters that are nearby the f and uh, we'll know if I'm able to reach that repeater because it will answer back with a uh, little silent hit or a ping and we'll see the uh, receive light light up on top. It'll turn green if the repeater heard us and if it answers back. So the first repeater I wanna try to hit is in the mountains behind me. It is uh, 17 miles away. Let's give it a try. WRD4, is anybody on frequency on this repeater that can give me a radio check? And did you see that? That repeater, 17 miles away, heard me from this handset with a one centimeter long antenna. All right, now let's switch to another repeater. Two, four. So now I'm gonna switch over to a repeater that is uh, 29 miles away. So it's actually 29.6 miles away, straight line from my house. So that's basically 30 miles. We're gonna see if we can hit it with this handheld using my custom trimmed one centimeter long antenna. Let's give it a try. This repeater gives a little beep tone back. So if I hit the repeater, it will respond with not only a little I'll see the light light up green, but I'll hear a little beep tone. So let's give it a try. W4, is anybody on this repeater that can give me a radio check? And I hit the repeater, 30 miles, basically. Well, if you're on a portable, you've got 100% uh, of the machine with uh, no noise, so you're doing good. All right, so you have a good afternoon, 73. Okay, so there you have it. BTEC GMRS V1 GMRS repeater capable handset. I was able to hit that repeater 30 miles away. That's not bad for this little guy. Now, like I said, this radio is only $55 if you get it on Amazon. And you know what? 
for what I want to use this for, which is off-roading. You know, I'm not sitting in the basement talking. I am off-road, running up and down trails. If you're hiking, if you're paintballing, you'd be an idiot to use a $600 radio in an environment like that. I want a $50 or $60 radio so that if I drop it or run it over with my Jeep or lose it, you know, I'm not going to be too concerned. Anyway, this is a fine little radio. You saw it does the job quite well. Pretty much does what it says it's going to do. If you have any questions about this radio, I did just get it. I'm still learning how to use it, but I think I've got most of the features down. So if you have any questions about the radio, leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you on the trail.